NBA imperialism. But each team is represented by their greatest all-time player, and they will compete one-on-one -on -one first to five points until one player remains to answer the question, who is the GOAT? Come on, come on, come on, come on. AI? AI? AI. AI's going south, a little bit east, but that's Maryland, so he's gonna play the Wizards and Wes Unsell. And although the answer was only six feet tall, his athleticism and elite dribbling might give him a chance against the six foot seven post scoring Wes Unsell. And this first matchup went on for what felt like years. Iverson would hit a nasty crossover and get an easy layup just for big body Wes to destroy him in the paint and score right back. Like I said, these games only go to five points. But this game in particular, they had 30 apiece because he got a win by two. He's got a chance to win it. He's got a chance. AI! AI! Let's go. Oh my god. That took so long, man. After a hard-fought 60-point game, AI would be claiming Maryland from West. But this was far from the most surprising outcome in this video. He can win it with this shot. And so before our next matchup, Powell would claim Mississippi and Dame would claim Idaho. Assuming Idaho is even a real place. I oh, just, just taking Idaho. Like, okay. But this next wheel spin would be far more exciting than the state of Idaho. T-Mac! T-Mac! From Orlando, he's going northeast. This is a massive stretch, but I'm gonna put him against Dominique Wilkins. And so with Tracy McGrady invading Dominique's territory of Georgia, they were both 95 overalls, and we'd have a fantastic matchup. But things did not seem like they were gonna be close for long, as Dominique came out and dominated in the post and at the rim, taking a 3-0 lead over Tracy, and T-Mac needed to do something quick. T-Mac. Bang! Finally, it's a two. He needed that. He needed that big time. Then Tracy hit another shot. He mac with the board. No way. No way! Oh my god! But Dominique wasn't quitting anytime soon either, as he would finish at the rim and go shot for shot with Tracy McGrady. This game would also take much longer than expected, and it was a nail biter to say the least. T Mac, T Mac for the lead. It's off. T Mac loves to just pull it, man. Dominique drives. Easy. It's easy. He's got it. It's over. And as Dominique took his territory in Florida, eliminating the big face of Tracy McGrady, we still had plenty huge names to go. Steph? 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 And with the compass pointing southwest, Chef Curry would be taking on Chris Paul. And though Curry seems like the obvious favorite, I knew one thing for sure. That's a good matchup. But Chris Paul felt disrespected and came out and got the first bucket. But let me just say, CP0's success didn't last long. You know what Steph? once you know what Steph wants you know what he came for even though Chris Paul kept scoring Steph would hit another two and then close it out on this one drive don't do it to him Steph don't do it to him Steph don't do it to him Steph that was quick Steph destroying Chris Paul now gave him half of California and after that PG-13 would take Kentucky then Pau Gasol would go from Memphis to Missouri followed by Hakeem taking Arkansas and lastly Dame would take Nevada until we had our next matchup with Dr. J on the attack Northeast Carmelo Anthony. This battle for New York between Dr. J and Carmelo was intense. Carmelo was working Dr. J with his signature post fades while Julius was driving at the rim hard. And I was on the edge of my seat until someone made a stupid mistake. Nah, nah, he's, just, he's gonna get a simple layup. Carmelo! Dr. J has takeover. You're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna stop the doctor. And with the doctor now taking all of New York, this next spin would get us back in the post game. Dirk? Dirk! Dirk! We got Goldilocks, baby. Dirk is going south, southeast. That's Hakeem's territory. And Hakeem, just like Dirk, was a 98 overall. So I figured we were in for a long ride. But Hakeem only scored twice, and the rest was the Dirk Clinic. That's out of it. Dirk with Dirk got blocked. It actually worked in his favor. Dirk for the game. I did not expect I did not think Hakeem would go down that easily. That's insane. Now two-thirds of Texas is Dirk's. Next up, Dame would expand into the state of Washington. And then right after, Powell would go into North Carolina and take over Alonzo Mourning's territory. But next up, a familiar face would be on the move. Iverson again. AI's going northwest. He's playing Dr. J. And with Iverson and Irving both being ball dominant guards, I figured we had a good matchup on our hands. But AI's quick handle was just too much for Julius, and he beat him 5-1. to one. He goes right by Dr. J. It's over. Pack him and send him. Now, we all knew Allen Iverson was really good, but to beat Julius Irving and take all of New York was surprising. But up next, one of the few faces in the GOAT conversation would take his turn to attack. MJ! 23 players left. We land on MJ! It's northeast, so you go across the lake. You hit Michigan. And representing the Detroit Pistons would be Isaiah Thomas, who is one of the scrappiest guards of all 
time. While he was undersized in this matchup, he made it very interesting. They battled this one out and both eventually got the five points, but MJ jumped out in front and got the win. MJ right on his head! Oh my. Jordan took over Michigan, controlling a little bit more of the North. Up next, Dominique would take it into the North to face Pau Gasol. And while the game was close, ultimately Pau's size gave him the advantage, now moving even further into the South. Pau wins! Size matters! With Vince Carter up next, he would be pointed Southeast into Allen Iverson territory. And this Hall of Fame 1v1 seemed exciting, but at the end of the day, Vince Carter just could not play defense. Yeah, like, Vince has no defense. He has no defense. AI's taking it his territory. He's moving into Canada. Damian Lillard would then claim Montana, another fictional state. Then Powell would claim South Carolina, followed by the return of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. He's going northeast, and considering his territory, he's going to be playing Allen Iverson, who has been the best player thus far. Even with MJ being a 99 and AI being a 96, anything can happen. And these two all-time scoring greats fought hard, primarily resorting to post fades and sometimes dunks. To no surprise, this game went beyond five points for the both of them. And eventually, we were all tied up at seven apiece. Oh, look at him. Look at him. MJ, terrible shot. He's celebrating that before it goes in. That was not a good shot. <laughs> MJ, good D. It doesn't matter. AI is just pulling his steam. Iverson is right on his hip. What is that shot from MJ? MJ's selling. If Iverson scores here, it's over. If Iverson scores, it's over. Iverson puts MJ out! Puts MJ out! The face of the NBA GOAT discussion was now eliminated. But don't panic just yet. Another candidate is still standing. Paul George? Okay, PG-13. Where's he going? East! He's playing the king, man! This is the matchup I wanted. I wanted this so bad. I wanted this so bad. Now, Paul George was only a 93 overall, and LeBron was a 99. But nonetheless, this game was really, really close. These two played phenomenal defense, in addition to phenomenal offense. And of course, this this went beyond five points apiece as we were tied at six all. It's tied six apiece. LeBron, LeBron just, he's right by him. He's right by him. He's, oh, oh, oh. King James has defensive takeover. It might be over for Paul George. Yeah, it might be over for PG. It might be over for him, man. He's posting him up. He's posting him up. Just in his face. In his face. You can't stop that. This is LeBron James we're talking about. And LeBron would expand westward into Paul George's territory, taking Indiana. But up next, we'd be going a little northeast. Kevin Garnett. KG's going east. Let's go. And KG attacking east, man. He was going to be playing the greatest center of all time, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I could instantly tell this was going to be a physical game. KG just goes right at Kareem. Oh my god. Kareem just form tackled him. But this physical matchup didn't last long because Kareem's size and overall athleticism was just too much. Kareem picks his dribble up. It, do it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's over. Kareem now took control of Minnesota and then AI would take control of Virginia. And after that, we would go west to Phoenix. We did somebody interesting. Chuck? Okay, that's cool. Northwest? That's in Dame territory. And Sir Charles going up against Dame was just a huge size mismatch. And so this 1v1 ended quicker than it started. With that being said, Chuck controlled a huge portion of the west side of the map. But next up, Larry would take New Hampshire and then AI would push it further south to West Virginia. But that's enough about about West Virginia. Let's get interesting. Come on, someone cool. There we go. Nikola Jokic, something interesting. Awesome. That's Southwest. He's playing Chuck. And I'll admit, I thought this was going to be a good matchup, but Jokic dismantled Charles. They were both super physical, but the Joker's post play was far more advanced. He's getting his own rebound. He's getting his own rebound. It's over. He's cooked. Now Jokic would be hijacking Charles's territory. After that, KD would make his presence felt by claiming Kansas. Kevin Durant. But one wheel spin later, and we'd be going back to Golden State. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And the compass would point Steph into Jokic territory, which seemed like an absolute mismatch. Curry's a 96, Jokic is a 97. There's a chance Curry could hit some major three-pointers on him. And looking back on this game, I might have been able to see into the future. Curry pulls it off rip. Oh my God, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I told you. Now, I don't know how he's going to stop Jokic, but we'll, we'll see, I guess. Yep, I like it. Okay. Jokic consistently backed down Curry, but Curry also could finish at the rim. But it soon became clear that the only way Steph's winning this is from beyond the arc. Tied at four piece. Curry for the win. Oh my God. Jokic's looking to take it all. Oh my, he's bullying him. He's breaking him down. Oh, that's not it. Curry with the board. Why did he, how did he make that? Jokic backing him down. Back, hey, there's nothing Curry. 
Curry cannot stop that. He won't stop that. Curry for the lead. <laughs> Bang! I'm sorry for the scream. I'm sorry. I think my mic peaked right there. I'm sorry. Curry's up by one. It's seven to six. He needs to get lucky. And he needs Jokic to miss. Jokic. Jokic misses. He can't get the board, though. He can't get the board. He can't get the board. And now the Joker has takeover. Curry can win it. Curry can win it with the shot. Bang! It's Stephen Curry. Steph had successfully pulled off what I considered to be an upset. And now he would be the one hijacking Jokic's territory. And next up, our friend with the cornrows would be making a return. AI again, man. It always lands on this guy. And the compass would be taking him northwest into Kareem territory. And even with Kareem having a 99 overall, I felt confident in AI's ability at this point. 99, 96, 100 overall, whatever. It doesn't matter. AI is probably going to win. And while this matchup started off competitive, with AI even getting the lead at some point, Kareem's size was just too much as he kept blocking him at the rim, ultimately leading to this great run coming to an end. This might be it for AI! AI's wrapped! AI, the dynasty has been dethroned! And while it was a good run for AI, it was Kareem's time to shine, as he would now control a monumental portion of the Northeast. But next up, we'd be heading back out west to the Durantula's territory. He's gonna go into Arkansas, which is Dirk territory. And Dirk and KD being pretty much the same height and having a dominant post game made me think this would be a close matchup. But in the end, KD had way better dribble moves, leading him to beat Dirk 5-2. And Durant would now have the majority of Texas, and some Midwestern states. And up next, we have what I'd consider to be a top 10 all-time matchup. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? Larry. Larry. Northwest Massachusetts. He's taking on Kareem. Larry's a 98. Kareem's a 99. Kareem's got a little more height, a lot more strength, but Larry's a sharpshooter. So we're gonna see how this pans out. And Bird's sharpshooting ability was a huge factor in this one. Kareem contested most of his shots, but it didn't matter for Larry. He was still hitting them. But don't undermine Kareem's skyhook. Larry had no answer for that one. And after going shot for shot, it came down to two possessions. Larry Legend, you gotta make, you gotta make something happen. We can't just... Oh, no. Larry sold. He's got to get a steal. He has to get a steal or a block or it's over. He's not. Yup. That's it. Kareem's taking Larry Legend off the map. Kareem would now take another top 10 legend off the map. And up next, we would have Anthony Davis attacking. AD's going east. He's going to play Pow. He's going into Mississippi. Pow had been running through everybody, and that continued for the most part. But AD stepped up too, and these two went beyond five points. But in the end, it seemed like Pow was going to keep his streak going. Pow backing him down. He wants it. He wants a turnaround shot. AD with the block and the board. And the win! With this come from behind win, AD would be taking a huge chunk of the map. And after KD claimed Nebraska, we'd have two of the greatest point guards ever facing off. Big O? It's basically Northwest. We're going to say he's playing Steph Curry. But before this crucial game, let me emphasize that there are only 10 teams left. Some players have tons of land on the map, and others are kind of flying under the radar. And with Oscar being one of those players, he now had a chance to do some serious damage. And again, I want to hype this up as an intense battle between the two great point guards, but Oscar's size and overall athleticism was just too much for Steph. His post game was on point, and Curry really couldn't do anything about it. Oscar, Oscar for game. Oscar, gamed Curry. And with this huge win, the Big O would now be the Western powerhouse. But with the Mamba finally getting his turn to attack, he looked to make his presence felt in the West. Kobe, Kobe be by it. Kobe's going east into Oscar's new acquired territory, so he's playing Oscar. And with Kobe and Oscar being about the same height, they went at each other. This game felt like the mid-range clinic. Oscar would score and then Kobe would score right after. Needless to say, this went beyond five points and came down to a wild ending. Kobe, why? 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 Oh, okay. Okay! Okay! Now he's taking all this territory. It's just getting passed around. Now Kobe would be in control of the West. And next up, KD would go West and claim New Mexico. Leading us to our next superstar who had yet to make an appearance. D-Wade. D-Wade is gonna play Anthony Davis. And you might be thinking, Anthony Davis with the crazy height advantage, this is over. But when you're Dwayne Wade, the best shot-blocking shooting guard of all time, you can hang with anybody. And Wade did that, hanging with Anthony Davis well past five points. But it was close until the last second. One point to Oh, dude, he just, he just backed him down. AD, AD, you fumbled. If Wade scores, it's over. AD fumbled, AD fumbled so hard. What was that? With Anthony Davis choking away all his territory, Wade was now a huge factor in the Southeast. And this next player was somewhat controversial. Carl Malone. Man should be in prison. 
All right, the compass would send the mailman west to play Kobe. And to keep it short, let's just say Kobe locked up Carl Malone. Oh, Kobe! With the Black Mamba expanding his Western dominance even further, Dwayne Wade would be facing another size mismatch as he'd be attacking Southwest into Kevin Durant territory. Both of these players are really good, but Kevin Durant is clearly much taller, which again, doesn't matter because you have Dwayne Wade, who's the best shot blocking guard of all time. He glitched his way past Kevin Durant. Durant needs a stop. Just dunk through the backboard. D-Wade takes over. After ripping away Kevin Durant's territory, D-Wade now had the majority of the map. But going back to the wheel would set us up for what I'd consider to be a top five matchup. LeBron! Finally, we're back with LeBron. He's going into Kareem's territory in Illinois. This is our first matchup of two 99 overalls. And even with the two being 99 overalls, I thought everything might go the King's way after this first highlight. Look at LeBron. Look at him. Bang! Oh my God. Kareem and LeBron went at each other. LBJ would use his athleticism to finish at the rim, and then Kareem would pull out all reliable, of course. But eventually, the ball was in the captain's hands, and he had a chance to seal the deal. Kareem getting inside, using his strength, and it's just too much. It's too much for LeBron. LeBron's out of this thing. And as Kareem now took total control of the Northeast, the world's two most popular GOAT candidates were now eliminated. But Kareem, Kobe, and Dwayne Wade still were standing. And Tim Duncan. Timmy D. Let's see it, Timothy. And Timothy Theodore Duncan would be traveling Northeast into Dwayne Wade territory. And again, I want to talk about the size mismatch, but we both know how this is going to go. D. Wade has thrown two guys who are above 6'10". I wouldn't be surprised if he did it again. And I did think he would do it again. But like most of these 1v1s, it would not come easy. Tim Duncan would take over the game with fundamentals. But then D-Wade's ability to force a turnover and finish at the rim would get him his points. And ultimately, it all came down to one final sequence. Oh! D-Wade, you sold it, bro. I was eating a McChicken. D-Wade! D-Wade can win it. D-Wade can win it. D-Wade, why? How does he get the ball? Dwayne Wade, oh my god. And this Dwayne Wade win would really put Empire in the word imperialism, as he controlled nearly half the map. And with this being our last wheel spin, we know one of these three players will be crowned the GOAT. We're back on Kareem, buddy. And the compass would steer the captain southeast to Dwayne Wade, meaning the winner of this matchup would play Kobe Bryant in the championship. And yes, Dwayne Wade took down AD, KD, and Timmy D, but Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was a different story. He took tore Dwayne apart in the post, backing him down and just having his way. It was a good fight for D-Wade, but it didn't last long. Look at him. Oh, that's it. That's game. That's ball game. And with Dwayne Wade on his way out, the map was now overwhelmingly green. But with Kobe Bryant standing in the captain's way, this could all change in a second. Now... All there's left to do is to watch Kobe and Kareem play this thing out. This championship game between two of the NBA's all-time greatest competitors would be first to 15. So without further ado, let's figure out who the NBA's GOAT really is. Kobe opening the game with a two? Why not? Why not? He's Kobe being Bryant. Green posting up, posting up. Old reliable, old reliable. It's simple for him. It's simple for him. It's the sky hook, man. Kobe's got it. Blows right by Kareem. I thought I saw something. I'm sorry. Kobe's up three to one. Kareem's got to make something happen. He needs a he needs a score and he needs to get a stop because he's not shooting anything beyond the arc. Look at that. That's that's light. That's light for the captain, man. Kobe with it gets right by Kareem. Just slips by him with the easy dunk. Look at Kareem. Oh my God! It's just the sky. Look, it's just Kobe blows by. Clo Kobe is just ugh. look at this. Look at Kareem. Look at Kareem. Just easy. Just eh. no. Kobe's trying to. This is not a good shot against Kareem. No way. Yeah, that wasn't smart, Kobe. That wasn't smart. Kareem's got Kareem blue by him. Kareem ties it up five apiece. Kobe with the drop. Nah. -uh. Oh, I thought I thought he I thought he was on some Dwayne Wade stuff. Kareem now has a chance to take his first lead. Oh no, Kobe, you gotta do something. Kobe, you gotta do something. You're getting bullied. You're getting bullied by El Capitan. That's the captain in Spanish, by the way. Look at Kobe. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Tied six apiece. Kareem's working it. Kareem's working it. Stiff arm. Stiff arm. Working it. Easy. It's light. Oh. Kobe actually, well, he had a chance, but that didn't work. Oh, oh Kobe with a little, little hezzy on him. Let's go, Kobe. Tied seven apiece. And Kareem and Kobe would, of course, keep going shot for shot. Kareem would rely on his sky hook, and Kobe would drive right around Kareem to the rim. These two exchanged the lead back and forth until they were at 12 apiece. Kobe. Oh, oh, that's a tough shot. He's not hitting that. Kareem doing that weird slow dribble thing he does that's just terrifying. Gets around him. Left side, left hook. Like... 
Bream takes the lead. We've had so many lead changes. Oh, Kobe right by him. Tie game. Tie game. 13 apiece. Bream wants to win it. He's ready to go. Kareem with the hook. Bang. One point away from winning. Kobe absolutely has to score. He'll probably blow by him and get a dunk. Oh, Kobe for the lead. Oh, Kobe might have sold. Kobe might have sold. Kobe, you got to reach. Kobe, you got to reach. Kobe, you got to reach. No. I wanted Kobe to win. But it doesn't matter what I want. Kareem now controls the whole map and would be crowned the GOAT. And yes, Kareem is the greatest all-time player, but if you want to see what the best team in the NBA is today, click on the center of the screen to see current imperialism.